What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, The Walk 71. Replace day with a four. Hold on. And I, oh, and I am here with my WWE Extreme Rules pay per view review for you guys. And honestly, this review shouldn't be very long because, to be honest, there's nothing really much to talk about with this pay per view. This pay per view wasn't uh, that good, honestly. From uh, top to bottom, the matches didn't really seem like they were going to be like interesting, except for like the main event, maybe. So uh, let's just get to it as fast as possible so I can get to this video on YouTube as fast as possible. So we got the pre-show, Kalisto versus Apollo Crews. Who cares? WWE doesn't want to push them. Kalisto was more, uh, what's the word, interesting when he was being thrown in a dumpster by Braun Strowman. And I don't know, Apollo Crews has no personality. He should have stayed at NXT. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I really didn't care for this match. Kalisto ended up winning again, which is interesting uh, how somebody so small like Kalisto was beating somebody so big like Apollo Crews. Anyways. <laughs> We open up with the show. We open up with the Intercontinental Championship match. Dean Ambrose versus The Miz. And the special stipulation for this match is if Dean is disqualified, he will lose the championship. And ironically enough, that's not even how he lost the championship. It was He lost the championship to a regular pinfall. I love how they teased it a lot. That was pretty interesting in the match. So you had the match. You know, there was a couple teases. Uh, like one funny one was kind of like an Eddie Guerrero tribute where uh, Miz had the, ch uh, the chair, right? And what he did was he took the chair. Uh, he, he took the chair and then he like, uh, I guess he threw it. Like Dean hit him in the face. The chair fell. It hit the ground. So it sounded like somebody got hit. And then Dean Ambrose picked the chair up. It looked like he was going to get disqualified. Another one was uh, Maurice almost got involved in. Um, oh, no, no, no. Another one that was cool was uh, the turnbuckle spot where it looked like uh, the turnbuckle was, uh, was taken off. And then Mid, uh, Dean was about to throw Miz into the turnbuckle. And then uh, the referee stopped him. Uh, then Maurice got involved. And then she got thrown out because I believe she hit the referee or something like that. Or she might have hit her husband by accident. Something happened. She ended up getting thrown out. It was so many, you know. Um, you know, uh, interesting dynamics they did with, um, with what they were trying to do with this match. But the match ended up being uh, Miz shoved Dean into the ref. The ref was about to disqualify Dean. And then the Miz hits the skull crusher finale. The referee magically just decides, oh, I'm going to be a referee again and pins the one, two, three. Miz is now your seven time intercontinental champion. And apparently, what's going on since Braun Strowman got hurt, it's going to be Roman Reigns versus uh, the Miz. Of uh, that, that's going to be their title program at the moment. The Miz and uh, Roman Reigns, so that should be interesting. Uh, the next match we end up getting, we got the uh, well, follow my mixed tag intergender tag match. People, we actually got that. We didn't get you know what we get where the men face the women, but we got something a mixed tag match between Noam Dar and Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks and Rich Swan. Honestly. This is like one of those matches where I just was like looking back because the whole time I this pay view was on, I was actually playing Friday the 13th with some of my friends. So I was actually having more fun doing that than actually watching the pay per view. So I had the pay per view on my iPad and I was just like mildly paying attention because A, I know a lot of people were not actually looking forward to this pay per view. Not a lot of people watched it. So I said I might as well make these three, four hours useful and play the game while I'm watching the pay per view because I know for a fact if I watch this pay per view straight through, I would be bored out of my mind. Anyways, uh, the faces won. Sasha Banks and Rich Swan have won. Oh, have the mighty have fallen. Sasha Banks went from main eventing pay-per-views, being in championship matches, to now doing this. Amazing. Uh, then we got an Elias Sam Elias Samson segment where he just sung in the ring, you know, trying to get himself over. And he got a decent pop. Uh, the next match we ended up getting was the Raw Women's Championship match. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. In a kendo stick on a pole match. Let's talk about this. And it's not even the match itself. Let's talk about what just happened last Monday. The Bailey This Is Your Life segment. So much cringe. It was so painful to watch that segment. WWE, with this This Is Your Life segment, buried their own product... With, I'm pretty sure they didn't even know they did it, but they buried their own product. Uh, they did that. Um, then they had the cringy segment where Bailey's ex boyfriend was only with Bailey to get to her best friend. Yeah, so yeah, it was terrible. You know, it was one of the worst things that happened. So the anticipation for this match just went because I thought this match might have you know 
some kind of you know decent thing to it but then the other the thing about the stipulation of this match is a candlestick on a pole match so the wrestlers have to take a candlestick from a pole and beat each other with it instead of having just you know a regular candlestick match it's like why do you have to put a special stipulation on a match that is already a special stipulation why do you have to put the candlestick on a pole why can't they just pull the candlestick from the ring and just beat each other with it anyways uh was it Alexa Bliss went Sandman on Bailey with the Kendo stick? And honestly, I was mildly paying attention to this match, but I wasn't at the same time. All I know is Bailey lost because Alexa Bliss hit her and hit the DDT. Alexa Bliss has retained the Raw Women's Championship. Yeah. Uh, the next match we ended up getting, we got the Hardy Boys taking on Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team Championship match and a steel cage match and honestly the point of this match is for jeff hardy to jump off of it which he did he had a whisper in the wind off of the top of the steel cage uh yeah they beat each other up and uh sheamus and cesaro win and now they're your two-time raw tag team champions uh how do i feel about this all right so how do i feel about the hardys now listen the hardys right now man they're they're just trash if they was gonna be used like this they could have just stayed in ring of honor or tna man for that matter because right now, the Hardys are, what, Team Extreme from, like, what, the Attitude Era? Like, this is 2017, not 1997, like, or the early 2000s. Like, I don't care about Team Extreme no more. That time is gone in WWE. So, honestly, them and Mickey James, they're just, like, nostalgia guys. They're there. They're not going to get no big reaction. The Hardys get a big reaction because it's the Hardys. But, like, Mickey James hasn't gotten the reaction that she uh, deserves. Um... And then the Hardy is just like, they're boring to me, honestly. They're just Matt and Jeff Hardy. Now, Matt and Jeff Hardy would have worked when they were younger, but now they're just two old guys wrestling. Now, this is where TNA really just like, this is where my uh, heat for TNA goes because they hold that gimmick and they want to sit up here and act like they have ownership even though Matt and Jeff created, even though Matt created the gimmick. They didn't even create it themselves. They own the gimmick. Anyways, yeah, so Matt and Jeff Hardy are boring, and now that they don't have the Tag Team Championships, Sheamus and Cesaro does. I don't know, but to me, it looked like it was a botched finish. I don't know, but Sheamus and Cesaro are Tag Team Champions, and uh, Sheamus and Cesaro, I don't think they were ready for a Tag Team Championship yet. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about this. I just, I just guess I got to continue to watch, because I feel like Sheamus and Cesaro aren't Develops yet. They haven't really like to me. They haven't done nothing. Oh, that's such like wow these these this tag team is amazing Yeah, they turned heel and look it was gonna be good and then they just went flat like they just They just haven't done nothing since they turned heel, which I thought was gonna be good But then again, this is the raw brand of WWE and not to be uh, biased towards Smackdown because Smackdown does some stupid stuff especially right now um, but the thing with um, them having expectations and then the expectations like falling down below sea level you know uh, but i'm spending too much time talking about this let's get into the match that i actually had the most fun watching neville versus austin aries for the cruiserweight championship in a submission match this match was i actually enjoyed this match for what it was it was pretty good a lot of you know different submissions from each other um the ending of this match was incredible might i add i really enjoyed this match as a whole I like that these two basically tried to kill each other and then put each other in submission moves. Now, one thing I thought would have happened would have been a TJ Perkins interference since he has, like, a lot to do with this feud. But, yeah, let's talk about, like, kind of the ending of the match. So, you had Austin Aries go for the last chancery on Neville. First, Neville, I believe, hit the, uh, what does he call his submission move? Hold on, hold on. Let me look at this up real quick. Neville. He calls it something. Uh... Give me one second. Let me look up Neville's, uh, the the name of his submission. I want to get this right. Uh, Neville. Wikipedia. No, not places. Uh. Here we go. Adrian Neville. That's a funny name. Uh, pro wrestling. Uh, in wrestling. What's the name of his finisher? Uh, The Rings of Saturn. That's the name of his, uh, arm trap face cross face i don't even know what it's called arm trap cross face yeah so he hit the rings of saturn on austin aries austin aries actually got out so then austin aries actually hit the last chancery and then somehow neville got out of it and rolled to the outside then austin aries hit it on the outside 
Then Austin Aries went for the low suicide dive. Neville trolled him. Miss he like he like moved out the way. Aries literally went on the outside dive into the uh, barricade. Then the cleanest part about this was that he rolled Neville back into the ring. I mean, no, Neville rolled Austin Aries back into the ring. He hit the uh, damn what is it? the red arrow on Austin Aries back. And after he hit the red arrow, he put him in the uh, he put him in the uh, the rings of Saturn, and then Austin Aries tapped out. Honestly, I. It was like, ah, I, I was like kind of torn with this match because it was like with Aries, he's the only person on the Cruiserweight division that's like, that can actually take the title and actually still be credible in a way. Austin Aries is probably the best person of the Neville in the Cruiserweight division. But the the thing with me is Neville right now is just on fire. He's just untouchable. So I don't feel like his title reign is ready to end yet. I don't feel like it's time yet because here's the thing. If if um, Austin Aries were to win the title, who would go after him? Maybe Brian Kendrick, uh, T.J. Perkins. But the thing with Neville is now, who is he gonna have to go after? Because you know the cruiserweight division, you know, is uh, it's uh, I don't know how I feel about the cruiserweight division. Like I made a video, but they clearly they, they at first they was fixing it, and then they they went back to doing what they're doing. So now honestly, I don't know who's gonna be next in line for the cruiserweight championship now. Maybe Mustafa Ali, but he's feuding with Drew Gulak, so I don't know what what, uh, what could happen. But yeah, Neville is still champion. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be the Oscar of the cruiserweight division. He's just not gonna lose that title. He's gonna be undefeated for like ever. Um, the next match we end up getting was the main event. We had Bray Wyatt take on Seth Rollins, who took on Samoa Joe, who took on Finn Balor. Who took on Roman Reigns in a fatal five-way Extreme Rules match. And the winner will become the number one contender to face the WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar at WWE Great Balls of Fire. I'm not joking. That's the name of the pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a mouthful. Uh, I, uh, it's like one of those matches I was mildly paying attention to. But then at that point, I was in a very, very intense game of uh, Friday the 13th. I got to start recording that for you guys. But, uh... Yeah, I wouldn't pay attention to the match, but I don't think I really have to pay attention to the match to really form my opinion with what I have to say. So the winner of the match ended up being Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe won the match. He's number one contender. He will be facing Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal Championship at WWE Great Balls of Fire. Yes, I'm not I'm not kidding. WWE Great Balls of Fire. Um now, WWE kind of spoiled it. With their advertisement for Great Balls of Fire. Because they actually had Samoa Joe's name, I think, right before Brock, I think. Or something like that. But I could describe the ending to you. So, actually, I could tell you how some people got knocked out. Alright, so Seth Rollins actually put Bray Wyatt through a table. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, then, I believe, Finn Balor started going crazy. Took everybody out. Hit the coup de gras on Seth Rollins. And then Samoa Joe came out of nowhere and hit the uh, Coquina Clutch, knocked out Finn Balor. He's the number one contender. Now, how do I feel about this match? This match right here, th these two, you can sell money for this match. You have the Destroyer versus the Beast. Do you know how clean this match can be if WWE actually like, lets them brawl and not have Brock suplex Joe like 50 times and then hit a bunch of F5s, have Samoa Joe hit like one move and then Brock hit another F5? Like, honestly... This is a very money-making match. I'm surprised um, this match wasn't like a SummerSlam match or something. Because this is something you can build off of one of the big four pay-per-views, honestly. I think SummerSlam or WrestleMania, I should say. Uh, but yeah, WWE Great Balls of Fire. We actually have a main event that has the champion for once. Because, you know, Brock doesn't show up to WWE events anymore. He's the champion, but he doesn't want to show up to events. But Vince McMahon just lets it happen. I don't know what's wrong with Vince. But, yeah, the match, um, that match in itself, th this match between Joe and Brock has a potential of being an incredible, hard-hitting, brutal match between these two, if WWE can do it right. I, honestly, I don't know what to expect, because last time I said that about a Brock Lesnar match where I thought it was going to be a very brutal match, it really wasn't. It was very generic. It was, And that match was actually Dean versus Brock for the... Uh, not for the title. At WrestleMania 32, I thought that match was going to be like a very a good match because of Dean's hardcore background, and it was nothing more than a bore squash match. So I hope this match does well. Now, I don't think Samoa Joe will win the title. I would be very surprised if they have him win the title. 
And then, like, I don't know who he would face. Maybe Seth Rollins, but I don't think they would do that. Roman Reigns is going in a program with The Miz. Maybe he could face Finn Balor. Uh, no, never mind, because they refuted for, like, a long time. I don't know who he could feud with on Raw, honestly. Yeah, but uh, Braun Strowman, uh, this is supposed to be his match, and he didn't get it because, you know, Samoa Joe. Uh, but, no, uh, honestly, I think this match has a good potential. I just hope WWE doesn't mess it up. Yeah, so, guys, that was my review for WWE Extreme Rules 2017 Raw exclusive pay-per-view. This pay-per-view was not well. Honestly, if you want to actually watch this, I say watch the last two matches, I should say. The last two matches. The rest of the matches was like, uh, you can literally catch a, a, a highlight video or something for that, for those matches. But those last two matches, I actually kind of enjoyed. Uh, anyway, guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell so I always get notification when I upload. Yeah, so you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, big announcement. Okay, so my thing is, I've recorded a vlog for you guys. But the thing is, Windows, not Windows, Sony Vegas is acting up. So now I have to get a new uh, software so I can put this vlog together for you guys. This video was supposed to be, this vlog was actually supposed to be out like last Tuesday, honestly. And then it Sony Vegas kept crashing. It kept messing up. So now I have to probably go get you know, uh, was it? Uh, did I forget that quick? Uh, Adobe Premiere because I heard that's a really good editing software. Like people make music videos with those. So I'm actually gonna use that. So just be patient with that. And also I'm gonna leave a link in my description. It's actually a petition to save wrestling on YouTube because if you didn't know. Uh, YouTube has this new policy and wrestling is in their like no no list I guess you could say with like hate speech and all this other kind of stuff so like uh, wrestling YouTubers people I like to watch on YouTube who make wrestling videos and all that kind of stuff aren't getting paid the money they deserve they're getting paid nothing and now people are starting to get str uh, strikes on their channel for having like wrestling stuff because it's bad which doesn't make sense at all but yeah i'll put the petition in the description you can sign it you know support hopefully this gets to google so they can take wrestling off of their list and yeah thank you for watching once again i'm out peace